Hello everybody, and hopefully all of you are having yourselves a good Friday. I'm prepared to get things going here tonight. Tonight we are playing we will be playing Blackwell Unbound. It's the second of the uh Blackwell uh saga, which consists of five individual games. I did think of, I did thought about doing another Nancy Drew game this week, but <laughs> Uh, but we'll probably save that for next week. Other thing here. Hey, Foxy Melly, Foxy Melly, already here. Foxy Melly does some streaming herself, gaming, and she does some excellent singing, which sings gaming and singing. As we are totally live, yes, yes. There's the notification. Go show that stream elements is working and all that good stuff there. I am whoops, I made something bigger than I uh, maximize something that I did not need to maximize. Anyway, uh last week we did Black the Blackwell Legacy. Which we were introduced to Rosangela Blackwell and Joey Malone. Now Blackwell Unbound is the second game in the series. But it's actually a prequel. And Foxy, thank you very much for the host. I appreciate it. Amazing how the host notification works. Sometimes not others. And by the way, folks, I am fully aware that they've added uh, things for like uh, more cheer bits or stuff that you do. There's You can unlock emotes for that. So I, yes, I know I have to get emotes made for that. I don't want certain things. Funds are a little bit tight at the exact moment because I just paid all my bills. Leaving me only with like, like 40 bucks until the next payday. <laughs> but since I'm not going anywhere, it's quite all right. But uh, so there should be new emotes for that coming. Um, uh, sooner rather than later, hopefully. But again, we see how things all work out. Now, uh, Blackwell Unbound should only take me a couple hours to get through. I am going to be trying to get, I mean, we'll, I will be straight up achievement hunting because I have played and streamed this game before. Uh, but, and then afterwards, I'm not totally sure what we'll do. Probably uh, Poker Night at the inventory. Maybe we'll get lucky and get the one achievement I need for that. If I can get that one achievement for that tonight. Uh, it it will be a good thing. A good thing. Uh, let's cut over to the game stream and get this game loaded. I need to do... Window capture on this. Or should this do a oh, game? Let's see. There you go. Give me a moment here. I just need to. Put certain things in. Certain places. Now y'all seeing it in 16 by 9. For me, I'm looking at it 4 by 3. Now there's one achievement I won't be going for, and that's commentary mode, where I have to go through the game beginning to end with the commentary mode enabled. Get certain things my desktop here put in place. What's this? I got a notification. Epic store notification. All sorts of stuff happening. Alrighty. Would you like to activate in-game instructions? We would. In addition to on-screen instructions, you can view the instructions by clicking the help button on the option screen.
Infinity. I've been told it's beautiful, but I don't think it's anything special. But when you live like me, most things become quite ordinary. Life, death, tormented souls, it's all the same to me. Sometimes I wonder if anything will ever surprise me again. Sometimes I wonder if I even care. Yeah, she's a chain smoker, in case you can't tell, folks. City, 1973. And stay out. Aw, oh, hey, you know I don't like that. What's your beef, anyway? I am not talking to you. Yes, she oh, is. promises, promises. So what's next on the list? What's next? The balcony. Why, gonna throw yourself over and join me? No, I'm having a cigarette. Great, you want a cigarette. What am I supposed to do? You can do whatever the hell you like. That's Just how it goes. Me. Then I can get on with this. Not moving from this spot until I finished my cigarette. Lauren isn't going anywhere right now. Maybe we'll have to better luck with Joey. Press the tab key to switch characters. I knew what was for this. Good. We're now controlling Joey. You can also switch characters by pressing J or L on the main interface. We'll walk Joey over to Lauren and left click to talk to her. What? Look, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Um... Exactly. Why the heck are you so mad? You honestly don't know. I have no idea. Typical. If you don't know, I'm sure as hell not going to tell you. You done moping? Or do you want to grind your teeth some more? Christ, Joey. Can't you just leave it for one minute? Take another drag of that cigarette, darling. You get real ugly when you stop smoking. Oh? Is that right? Well... Ugly, am I? Take it easy, dear. It was just a little joke. A joke? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a riot. Like today, when those pipes burst. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is, is that what's got you in such a guff? I got soaked, and you just laughed. What was I supposed to do? Give you a towel? It was cold and wet and slimy. <laughs> it wasn't funny. You should have seen the look on your face. The way you jumped up and down and ran in circles, squealing. <sighs> Still wasn't funny. If you say so. Clearly it was funny. Okay, I'm finished. Let's get on with this. There's a few things we haven't checked, right? Yes, I've got the list right here. Well, let's check it. Every other case today has been a false alarm. Maybe this will be an easy night. Looking at objects. Look at objects or characters. Simply right-click on them. Switch back to Laura and look at her case list. Ugh. Every one of these leads has been a dead end. Just two more to go and we can call it a night. Alright. I read about a grocer who was complaining about his stock mysteriously disappearing. Turned out to be a bunch of rats. Joey scared them half to death. Most fun I've had all year. And that was a waste of time. Didn't find any ghosts, and I got soaked. That woman was old, drunk, and senile. A total waste of time. Typical. 
This one looks promising. Residents have reported strange music on the promenade late at night. Nobody knows where it comes from. A development corporation has halted construction after a series of accidents. Probably nothing, but accidents. Worth out. It's always accidents in quotations, isn't it? Got it. Let's talk, Joey. Yeah, doll. Say cheese. You added it to Lauren's photo albums. You have taken one out of four bonus photographs. Having fun? Yes. I guess I could take this along. This is a little recording device. It's called a dictaphone. I've been using it to record my dreams. Testing, testing. Hello? Good Does dream. Does voice really sound like that? <clears throat> Gotta cut back on the cigarettes. Anyway, I've been having some extreme dreams lately, but I don't remember any of them. I get the strangest feeling that they're important, but I can't put my finger on why. I'm keeping this recorder next to my pillow so I can record what I remember as soon as I wake up. First entry, February 21st, is it? God, my head. I dreamed tonight. It's already fading away. I saw my mother. She was calling out to me and waving. She was smiling, and her face was bright. So bright. I see a child, seven or eight years old. She's surrounded by other children, but she's all alone. Hmm. I call out to her, but she doesn't hear. Something is wrong. With me? With her? It's fading. I see a man in tattered clothes. That'll be Joey. He looks at me and screams. I look in a mirror and see a huge horned demon. For some reason, I'm not surprised. I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge staring at the seaport. I'm alone, strangely at peace. The water, it looks so cool and inviting. Suddenly I'm in the water, floating. Hmm. I dreamt I was in a strange room. The walls are a deep pink, and there are books and papers everywhere. Joey is behind me, trying to get my attention. I ignore him. I feel strangely good about it. Weird. I see Jack and Maria. They're far away, but I know it's them. I see his glasses and her bright red hair. I want to join them. I run to catch up. I almost get there, but I, I trip and fall. Maria turns to help me up, but it's not Maria. She's got red hair like Maria, but it's someone else. She says she's sorry. Then I wake up. I'm in a hospital room. There's a Chinese girl lying on the bed. I want to help her, but she doesn't want to be helped. Suddenly, I say a magic word, and her eyes widen with trust. I've made a friend, and yet I don't want her friendship. I run away. I'm hmm. on a fire escape. I'm talking with a man who wants to be my friend. Suddenly, his face turns blue. He, he can't breathe. He dies. It's my fault. I could have stopped it. Disturbing dreams are disturbing. I'm in a huge house. I see gas lamps and electric lights. I look into a mirror and see an old woman. She reaches out of the mirror to grab me. I take her hand and hold it tight. Then I wake up. I'm on a train, speeding away into the night. Next to me is a man. I know nothing about him, yet I trust him. I think I love him. Then he disappears. What did I do wrong? I'm trapped. Trapped somewhere bright. How I many see of these my mother dreams does she have? And a woman I don't recognize. I see Joey far away, calling out for me. We're fighting for our lives, but it's too late. The world goes dark. Ugh, I hate that dream. Testing, testing. Whoops. Got it all. Got the Does achievements. Does really sound like that? <clears throat> Gotta cut back on the cigarettes. Anyway, I've been having... I get this... I'm keep... Alright, it's called the Dreamcatcher Achievement, which is basically listen to everything that was there. Alright. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. He has no choice. He has to float with me. 
Roosevelt Island, the promenade. Hmm. Looks like another bus, Joey. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. Wait, you hear that? I think so. Let's get closer. Get closer! G-g-g-g-g-g-ghost! Hey, Looks like our evening might not be a total wash after all. No book updated. Thorne and Jory have just received their first clue. To use your notebook, click the notes button on the main interface. Only Laura, Lauren can use the notebook. Say cheese. We got two out of four bonus photographs. Hey, Mac, the name's Joey. Ah, uh, the talkative sort, are we? Hmm. Well, we'll soon sort that out. So, nice night, huh? Totally a nice night. That's a pretty nice instrument you got there. Mind if I have a look? Hmm. Hey, do you feel... restless? Like you've got somewhere to go but don't know where? It means you're dead, Mac. Can you even hear me? Well, we tried. I'll be back, pal. Don't you worry. Hey, I'm talking, Buster. Hey! You let, let go. go! I need to ask you a few questions first. Not now, man. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Get off the stage! Stage? Ow! Ah, that's how we treat your kind at Johnny Ivory's. Johnny Ivory's? What are you talking about? Hello? Oh, we're dealing with a real sharp tack here. Yep, totally sharp tacks. You now have two clues in your notebook. To combine clues, click on one clue, then click on another. Lauren will attempt to combine them and give you more information. The ghost believes in a place called Johnny Ivory's. Last time I mentioned the name, Johnny Ivory's. That ghost mentioned Johnny Ivory's. Totally a connection. Totally a connection. Oops. Well, not much more we're going to do here. Oh boy, we've got company. Can you see? Pardon? Can't you see? See what, lady? The whole of the world. Connections, patterns, pulsing with life everywhere. Oh great, one of New York's finest crazies. Do eh. something about this old bat, will ya? Look, I'm a bit busy right now. I don't have time for this. Fool! Liar! Can't you see? Um... Useless! Useless! Wow. I know. Rude. Oh, New York. Mm-hmm. Hey, kid, come here. Yes? Is Johnny Ivory a name? Never heard of a name like that. Dunno. There's always the phone book. Looks like our night won't be so easy after all. Disappointed? Nah. So rude, but it's New York. Alright, let's get on with it. Yeah.
Johnny Ivory's Jazz and Cabaret. It's on Bleecker and 7th Avenue. You up for some jazz, Joey? You mean we finally get to listen to some real music? Call it my <laughs> special treat. And if memory serves me right... Yes, there is an entry for Russell Stone. Hello? Uh, yes, hello? What can I do for you? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Good vault. Then call back when you do. What was the point of that? I don't know. His voice sounded kind of familiar, though. Basically breaking the fourth wall with that one. There was an achievement for that called Shiva Call. It's basically making an unusual phone call. Alright, so we got that out of the way. It's my rainy day jar. I put some money in here whenever I think of it. It's a trick I learned from my mother. There's around $60 in here now. And in 1960-something, that's like $60. Actually, it's more recent than that, but... Considering the box TV with the rabbit ears... Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Johnny Ivory's. Say cheese. That's three or four photographs. It's my trusty Polaroid camera. Floating heads are floating. Y'all saw that, right? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> hmm, this one looks interesting. The woman is blocking the piano player. I can't see his face. The only thing holding up that dress is fate. Pretty girl, though. I wonder who she is. I don't know. I think the, the straps on the dress are holding it up. That's him. The Jasmine ghost from the promenade. Looks like we're on the right track. Notebook updated. Courtesy of Jambalaya Records. Hmm. Mm, Might be worth checking Jambalaya. Out. I don't know much about pianos, but it seems nice enough. He seems to be enjoying himself, even though there's nobody here to listen to him. Hey, mister. Yes? Got a minute? For a pretty thing like you, I got several. Huh. So what brings you here on such a sad night? I just love music. Well, how about that? I just happen to make music. It's a match made in heaven. And Lauren, what's your name? Pleasure is all mine, Lauren. You can call me C. C. You got it, sister. Is that C like the water? That's C like the chord. It's the first chord I played, and you never forget your first. Ain't that the truth? Kind of a flirtatious, isn't it? Do you know any other musicians? I do run in those circles, yeah. 
any of them play here? Sometimes we get major gigs here, but me, I'm what you call the dependable type. These fingers can go all night long. Can they now? Oh, jeez, make him stop. Be nice, Joey. It's okay for me to talk to you like this. I don't hear anybody else complaining. Dull night, huh? You could say that. But I think it just got a bit more interesting. Is that right? Well, these lips don't lie. I'm looking for info about a musician. Well, I'll try to help you out. Who is he? I don't know his name. I think he's a sax player. I know lots of sax players, sister. Big guy, kind of chubby, has a beard. Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. What's the band in that photograph behind you? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is all. Hmm. See you around. Anytime, sister. It's the photo from Johnny Ivory's. It's the photo from Johnny. This one looks interesting. It's our sax playing spirit in the flesh. Just some sheet music. Nothing special. What do we have here? He's written something at the top of the sheet. Property of Cecil Sharp. Aw, how sweet. Maybe his mommy signed it for him. Notebook updated. He's a swinger past his prime. Not bad on the piano, though. I just wish he'd keep his eyes on the keys. Joey's jealous. We had a phone call. Lauren. Lauren, it's Jack. Lauren, Be I know you're there. I'm your brother. For God's sake, talk to me. Nope, no talking there. Let's see. Jambalaya Records. Here we go. Jambalaya Records. 240 Essex Street. I'll jot that down. Come on, Man. let's get out of here. Right behind you. Man, Lauren, this lights up cigarettes like it's nobody's business. Say cheese. We have taken four out of four bonus photographs. Good evening. Good evening to you. I'm Dwayne. Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping you could help me. I'll do my best. What can I do for you? So what is this place? This? This is a music agency. We manage bands, do promotions, things like that, you know? Scam artists well, have I, their money. We, I really mean me. You do this all by yourself? Yep. One man operation. That's me. What sort of music do you manage? Mostly jazz and reggae. Nobody famous. Most small timers have trouble getting their foot in the door. Getting gigs in small
small clubs, helping with recording sessions, you know, the basic stuff that musicians don't want to deal with. You know, the work, the actual work, the business of the music business. You're open late. Really? Yeah, I suppose I am. I learned to work musician hours, you know. You play a gig at night and have a problem, you want someone to call? Your clients have lots of problems, do they? Don't get me started. Does the name Cecil Sharp ring any bells? You know, that name does sound familiar. But, uh, I'm so awful with names, you know. Is he part of a band? Maybe. He plays piano at Johnny Ivory's. Ah, uh, I deal with them all the time. But that's not where I heard the name. Hmm. This is going to bug me all night. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. No problem, man. Do you know this band? Oh, yeah. I remember those guys. The C Sharps. That was the band's name? Yeah, I used to manage them. You used to manage them, but not anymore? Nah. Been about eight, ten years. Hmm. Time flies, you know. Notebook updated. Prominent Ghost used to play in a band called the C Sharp and was managed by Wayne. Cecil Sharp, the C Sharps. Cute, real cute. Notebook updated. Hi again. Hi yourself, again. Was Cecil Sharp in the band the C Sharps? Cecil Sharp. Shops. Yes! I knew I heard the name from somewhere. So do you remember him now? Oh yeah, he was the band leader. A genius on the piano. Hmm. So C is Cecil Sharp. Egad! What a revelation. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. Back to Johnny Avery's. Hey, C. Hello there. What can you tell me about your old band, the C-Sharps? C-Sharps? Can't help you there. Never heard of them. Now, I know that's a lie. It's a lie, dude! your old manager. He confirmed who you are. You spoke to Dwayne? Yes, I did. That... Fine! You got me! Yes. yes. I used to run a band called the C-Sharps. It was a rotten time in my life, and I'd just as soon forget it. Why are you stirring up these old ashes, huh? I have my reasons. Yeah, sure you do. He, he's all mad. About that sax player. Yeah. He's in that photo behind you. So I know he's with the C Sharps and that you know him. What is this? You from that damn magazine? Magazine? The magazine? New Yorker. You a reporter? No. So who is he? You just don't quit, do you? Oh. Nope. You want to know so badly? Yep. His name is Isaac Brown. Isaac Brown? Yes. You happy now? Ecstatic. Great. Notebook updated. Who is the reporter? I don't know. Mitchell something? Slow talker. Drove me crazy. You think he killed Isaac? I just played the piano. I don't think anything. Especially not the past. Whoever did Isaac, the son of a bitch had it coming. So please, just get out of here. One more thing. What can you tell me about Isaac Brown? Him? He's a bum, a drunk, a nobody, a lowlife. He's also dead. And how did he die? Someone strangled him to death with his bare hands. Isaac must have squealed like a pig. You don't seem very upset by this. No, but last time someone asked about Isaac, 
It was some reporter from The New Yorker. He came along, asked his questions, then bam, Isaac's dead. Really? Yeah. Huh. So forgive me if I don't take kindly to pushy questions. Well, at least we got some information. Another lead. See you later. Yeah. Yep, there's a listing for the New Yorker. Their main office is in Midtown. Thank you for calling the New Yorker. How can I help you? Hello, yes. I'm trying to reach a reporter named Mitchell. Let's see now. Hmm. Mitchell. Mitchell. We have a Joseph Mitchell on staff. Is that him? I guess it's worth a try. Is he in? Yes, he is. Hold, please. Here we just floating around. He's not answering. Maybe I should go up there in person. Alright, we're heading to the New Yorker. I'm not carrying that around. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Yes? Can I help you? Are you Mr. Mitchell? I sure am. I'm Lauren Blackwell. Well, do come in, Miss Blackwell. I was hoping that you could help me. Well, I'll hmm. do what I can. What is this regarding? Are you a reporter or... Hey, Troll Hunter, how are you, sir? Troll Hunter, a shout out here, who does crit things and other gaming. And no, this is obviously not the new troll, the uh, Call of Duty. Although I could obviously play that since I got the hardware for it, but... So. No, I'm just doing some research. Uh, see, you're a student. More a student of life. Uh, aren't we all? So what can I do for you, Miss Blackwell? So how long have you been working here? Do you always ask such personal questions? I'm just curious about the sort of work you do. I write mm. about people, Miss Blackwell. What sort of people? Not the famous sort. Just ordinary people, like you or me. Ordinary people. Hmm. Like me. You find that amusing? Oh, not at all. How you doing, Troll Hunter? How's your day, sir? Actually, also, how's your day? I think I forgot to ask. So tell me about yourself, Mr. Mitchell. I beg your pardon? Tell me about yourself. Yes, I heard you. I hope you didn't come here simply to interview me. I'm afraid I'd make a poor... Investigator. Answer. I'd like to talk about Isaac Brown. Ah, uh, Isaac. You knew Isaac? Sort of, yes. I'm looking into his death. Really? That was almost five years ago. Why the sudden interest? Let's just say that I have a personal interest in clearing it up. Anything else you can tell me about Isaac? Why do you want to write about him? I don't want to go too in-depth. Out of respect, you understand? Sure. I was drawn to him for the same reasons I'm drawn to anybody I write about. I felt he had a story that could reach people, enrich them, perhaps learn from. Really? Miss Blackwell, spend some time talking to the poor and the downtrodden. Walk down the Bowery and speak to the half-wits and the have-nots. In one hour, you'll learn more from them than you would from a lifetime of school. Huh. So what was Isaac's story? I know he played in a band called the C-Sharps. Then something obviously went wrong. What was it? Listen, what? have you tried asking Mr. Sharp? Yes. He's not talking. I don't blame him. He's probably feeling guilty. Guilty? guilty? Why? He has his reasons. Could you, uh, I don't know, tell me what those reasons are? I can't do that. Of course he can't. No, oh, because that would be simple. Mr. Mitchell, I need to know what happened. Listen, I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable talking about people without their consent. I won't say any more about Isaac or his sister. 
Sister. Sister? Uh, please, I'm not gonna say anymore. Notebook updated. Who was Isaac's sister? I told you, not another word. About Isaac Brown. I told you, not another word. Hmm, well... I'd like to read your piece about Isaac. Ah, uh, well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. I never published it. You didn't? No, it seemed a bit in bad taste. Since when do reporters care about bad taste? Never! Since when do reporters care about bad taste? Ah, uh, you don't have a high opinion of journalists, do you? Well, you hear things. Oh no, don't worry about it. I'm well aware of the stereotype. I have written mm -hmm. about deceased persons before when I felt it was in the public's interest. But Isaac, well, I felt the man deserved some peace. If you felt his story could reach people, enrich them, as you say, why didn't you publish the story? Listen, Miss yes, Bradwell. we gotta get dig. Isaac didn't just die. He was murdered. Someone reached around his neck and strangled the life right out of him. That puts a bit of a damper on the story I wanted to tell. So nobody will hear the story? All my notes on him have been destroyed. Isaac's story might not have reached the people, but it reached me. Maybe that's enough. Right. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. Hmm. Back to Johnny Ivory's. Cecil? What? About that reporter. I know nothing else about that man. Southern guy. Talked real slow. Asked a bunch of questions. Gave very vague, leave, vague okay? answers. About Isaac Brown. Leave it, lady. The past is dead, gone, and buried. I need to speak to you about Isaac's sister. You? That's it! You've crossed the line, sister. It was fun for a while, but now it's time for you to leave. Ooh, now you've done it. What did I do? Look, Buster, I've had it up to here with this. I need information, it's stuck in your head, and I plan on getting it out. Less talk and more get the hell out. You want me to leave? I'll leave. Rude. You really have a way with the fellas, kid. Ah, uh, don't sweat it. His bark is worse than his bite. I know that expression. Only time a man gets yep. a look like that is when he's hung up over a woman. Go easy on him, huh? I think he cares more about that gal than he lets on. Exactly. She is a spirit medium. Oh, it's you. We need to talk. Let's talk about you love. You loved her, didn't you? Of course I loved her. She was our heart and soul. I would have... Damn you, woman. Damn you. I just want to play you? this piano and forget she ever existed. Why don't you just leave me alone? So what happened, C? It's very important that you tell me. All right. All right. I don't know who you are or why you're so interested, but you're never going to leave me alone, are you? No, I won't. You were in a band together, right? Yeah, we had a band. Smart girl. Then she died. Then he died. End of story. Hmm. It's a never-ending story. And the spirit is a murder victim, or who is he? Now, uh, jo Joey's uh, story is a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> uh, it gets revealed over the course of five games, but he is a ghost who uh, he who was more or less murdered back in like the thirties, I think. And he's more or less got assigned to being helping other spirits cross over. And it's more or less the legacy or curse of the Blackwell family. How did you meet Isaac's sister? First of all, her name was Sarah. I was Second game. To start a band. And I saw and the first game her. last Friday. She could sing like it was magic. Such energy, such 
life. Such a waste. What happened to Sarah? She got sick. Pneumonia or something. Started coughing one day and wouldn't stop. She got better after a while, but something happened to her voice. Doctor said she would never sing again. After that, the spark just went out. She hung on for a few months, but she just lost the will to live. Hmm. Anything else you can tell me about Sarah? I love that woman. Even when she lost her voice, I would have given up everything for her. Heck, I would have even let her brother live with us. I should have told her. Yes, you should have. What was Isaac really like? That fat bastard. Rude. He was good on the sax, but that was the end of his good points. He drank, he was violent, he was useless in every other way. But Sarah could calm him down. She was the only one. If it wasn't for Sarah, I never would have kept him around. What happened to Isaac after Sarah died? He went to pieces. What do you think? Oh, he couldn't cope. Drank way too much. Started fights during gigs. I tried to stick with him out of respect for Sarah, but let's face it. He was a big, dumb embarrassment. So you cut ties with Isaac? Completely. Told him he was a drunk and a lowlife and wasn't worth the peanuts I paid him. Which was, let's face it, totally true. What happened? He beat me senseless is what happened. Knocked me out with the sacks I bought for him. Then he became a bum. Spent the rest of his life living on the streets of Roosevelt Island. Till he got killed by some drifter. Hmm. You don't know who killed Isaac? Yes, I killed him. Oh, come on. No, I did. I'm not the one who put my hands around his neck or choked him to death, but I killed him just the same. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. I know that. My brain knows that. But, but the my heart? heart won't listen. Can you tell me anything else about Isaac? No, I've told you everything. About Sarah? I told you everything. Please, just stop. About that reporter? I know nothing else about that man. Southern guy. Just leave it, okay? See you later. Yeah. You know, all this talk reminds me of something. Sarah and Isaac would always play this song. Really? Yeah. A duet. At the end of every show. She'd hmm. sing and he'd play the saxophone? No, she'd actually play the piano, if you can believe it. She wasn't great, but she loved playing with Isaac. And Isaac loved that silly song. They never let me join them, but that was okay. It was kind of sweet, in a way. Oh, well. Hmm. Cecil? What? What was the duet that Isaac and Sarah used to play? Oh, that. It was just a short little thing. Isaac would just improv the whole thing. But Sarah's was always the same. With something like... Hmm. After Sarah died, Isaac would play gigs, but refused to leave the stage. He'd blow on his sax playing anything that came to mind. Feet planted like a statue. He'd just keep playing? He'd play forever if I didn't get four guys to drag him off. I think, I think he was waiting for Sarah to play with him. He was supposed to finish each show with her and, well, in his heart he refused to believe she was dead. Could you play that song again? Yeah, sure. Why not? I think I've recorded enough. Somebody is already playing it. Yep, okay, so we got that done. We're heading to... Yeah.
Hi. Sis? Is that you, sis? I've been waiting for so long. Never want for the love. Never heard of it, uh, Troll Hunter. No, Isaac. I'm not your sister. She couldn't come. No. No, she couldn't, could she? My sister's dead, isn't she? Yeah. Now I'm dead, too. Yeah. I knew that. Deep down, I knew that. I just couldn't let go. I'm sorry. Is that why you two are here? To help me let go? That's what we do best. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Don't worry. Just leave everything to us. Here, just take this. Whatever you say. Hold on tight. This is the fun part. Hi, Isaac. Hey, this is it, huh? Yep, eternity, the white light, the passage into the next world. It is something, all right. I still can't believe I'm dead. Crazy old lady, she killed me. Old lady? Old lady? Says she wanted to help Big rules and jokes. Why'd she want to go and do a thing like that? Sorry, I wish I knew. I don't think it matters anyway. It's time I join my sis. Just head into the light. Thanks, honey. You've been real kind. Off into the light. Tell your friends sorry for the crap over here. <laughs> right. Another day, another spirit gone to their rest. Hmm. Rest. Well, that's a nice word. I don't know about that anymore. Ah, ah, cool. Uh, Joey. Yeah. Hi. Glad you're up. You? Did you? Did you save him? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We saved him. Joey, is she talking to you? Yeah. Go figure. Thank you, both of you. I only wanted to save them. Isaac told me he was killed by an old woman. Was that you? I save just like you. Who are you? I am the Countess. Countess? Countess of what? It's the only name I know. I saved them. I helped them. I. I'm sorry. Hey, get back here. Don't just stand there. Let's get after her. Huh. That's so much for getting after her. She's pretty spry for an old lady. Spry my foot. You couldn't outrun a one-legged turtle with those lungs. Don't start with me, okay? Rude. Ooh. Hey there. Nobody that old should move that fast. Just keep telling yourself that. Hmm. Joey, she could see you. How could she do that? I don't know. But I think this case just got a hell of a lot more complicated. Yeah, it did. Fantastic. Notebook updated. The Countess. Isaac's murderer called herself the Countess. She's a strange old woman dressed in rags. Not a second, folks. Give me a moment here. Like, hi, Lena Bean. How are you? Can I? I did. Yes, I can. Okay. I give Lena Bean a shout out. She does Twitch things as well. Hopefully, you are doing okay today on this fine Friday evening. Check something here. I'm doing all right. Got paid and paid bills, which is 
you know, adulting things. Okay, system interrupts. Okay, what the heck is causing it? GG. As they say. Uh, goodness. Let me I need to I'm clicked out of the game because I'm trying to figure out why my my system is lagging slightly. I haven't had that issue in a while. Let's close that out and push this over in the Firefox. All right, that should do it. So hopefully all is well. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. The memory serves me right. We're at the halfway point of this game, so we're heading off to 53rd and Lex. Well, this is it. Yep. All's quiet so far. The gate is locked. I can't get through. All right, I remember this now. This was, I remember this took me a while. All right, I'm going in to check it out. I'm Stay crafting on the, the yeah, crafting sure. and singing until Let I'm allowed to go find. outside again. That sounds like a plan. Hello? Anyone here? Ah. Well, what do you see? Is it clean? I'm afraid not. Well, hurry up then. I feel stupid pressed up against this wall. Notebook updated. Where else can I go? This place is filthy. Hey there. Huh? Could someone be there? Of course not. No one would be so rude as to enter without knocking. <sighs> well, I'll be back. Friggin' spooks. Very rude. Hello out there. Joey, what are you doing in there? I need you to do something. What? Hop on one leg. What? Why? I'll explain later. Just do it. Okay. What did that accomplish? <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. I hate you so much. This place is filthy. <laughs> Where else can I go? Trolled. Hello out there. Joey, what are you doing in there? I need you to do something. Hmm, it better be good. My home. Hey lady, I'm talking to you. No, no the door is closed. Nobody, Nobody is there. there. Only way in is if I open the door. And to do that, he'd have to knock. Um, knock knock? What? <sighs> Nobody is there. The door is still closed and bolted. <sighs> Alright, I'll be back. Let's try this. Friggin' spooks. Let's try this again. <laughs> Hello out there. Joey, what are you doing in there? I need you to do something. Hmm. It better be good. Knock on the gate door. Knock on the door? Why? I'll explain later. Just do it. A knock. knock. Oh my! Oh my. A, visitor. a visitor! Uh, just, just a, a minute. minute! Is my hair okay? It'll, It'll have, have to, to do. do. 
Hello? Greet nicely. Hello, miss. Hello? Can I help you? I'm Joey Malone, miss. Well, Mr. Malone, to what do I owe the pleasure? What's your name? Excuse me? Your name? My name is on the door. If you don't know who I am, then why are you here? I'm a bit lost. Can you tell me where I am? Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you looking for a specific apartment or... Ah, apartment, apartment building. You mean we're inside a building? Yes. Are you feeling all right, mister? No, he's quite dead. You're not in a building, lady. Take a look around. I don't know what you're talking about. We're on the third floor. Look, there's the elevator down the hall. Ah, right, yeah, I see it. Are you sure you're feeling all right? I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand here and indulge in idle chit-chat. Who are you? I'm with the gas company. I was sent to check your apartment for leaks. Didn't you come this morning? Uh... Yes, you did. You found nothing and you charged me a fortune. That must have been someone else. You're not fooling me. You're one of them, aren't you? One of them? Who is them? I told you all before, I am not leaving. The only way you can drag me out of here is as a corpse. Goodbye. Did I leave the gas on? Well, guess we kind of get an idea what happened to her. I'd like to see them try. They want to fight? I'll give them one. It says Seagram Realty. I guess they're the guys who own this construction outfit. Cheap material. I want nothing to do with it. Just a fan. Totally just, just a fan. Just a bunch of drawers. Hmm. The name under the picture is Farrah Fawcett. I wonder if she likes dead guys. Here's a question for you, folks. I can't make heads or tails out of this thing. Let's take a look-see. Dear Mr. Foreman, so it's July 23rd, 1973. I was hoping you could help me. I've tried speaking to your boss, but he ignores my calls. The agreement, I believe, was $230 a month for five years. However, since the move, I've only been receiving $225 a month. Can you please uh, send someone with $60 I am entitled to? I come myself, but it's hard for me to get around these days. Miss Harriet Sherman. This letter was written only a few weeks ago. This lady is upset because she's been stiffed five bucks a month. My guess is that she's not too happy with the foreman. Harriet Sherman. I have no idea who she is, but any lead is a good lead. A very good lead. see that spirit pacing back and forth out there. Right. Who pays his bills but Miss Five Dollars? Well, if you know anything about uh, eminent domains so, and stuff like that, people being forced Not out of neighborhoods are paid Slacker. off. Sometimes the folks who do the paying of those uh, make uh, who would benefit from those agreements and getting people out of a neighborhood tend to shortchange those people, the ones that they agree to pay amount to. So, it's a it's actually still a common practice. It's my phone book. Hmm. 
there's no listing. They must be based out of town. Got her. There's a phone number, but no address. Hello? Is this Harriet Sherman? Who is this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. What do you want? I'm calling from Seagram Realty. Oh, why didn't you say? You've got my sixty dollars. Um, yes, yes, I do. But before I give it to you, I have to ask you a couple of questions. Fine, fine, fine. Come on by and I'll answer whatever you want. Twenty-four Rector, down in Battery Park City. Just buzz up. So, Joey. Yeah? Got any spare cash on you? Sorry, left my wallet in my other pants. Probably the pair I was buried in. Well, Lauren has a rainy day jar. Hmm. The things I'll do for a case. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. It's open! I'm back here in the kitchen! Harriet? Mrs. Sherman, if you don't mind. You from Seagram Realty? Yes. Yes, Have we're from Seagram Realty. I wanted to ask you a few questions first. You're welcome to ask me anything you'd like. After you give me the money. You got it? I sure do. It's about time. Give it here. That's a New Yorker for you, here folks. You hmm. It's all here, sure enough. I'd say thanks if I hadn't had to fight tooth and nail to get it. What teeth, you old bat? Don't worry about it. Oh, I won't. Now, you wanted to ask me something? So tell me about yourself. Me? Why do you want to know? Your name came up during an investigation I'm working on. Investigation? Don't you work for Seagram Realty? Not exactly. Ah, you just use them as a way to get to me, huh? Yes. Is that a problem? Oh, not at all. Just don't expect your money back. She's all heart. Yeah, she totally is, folks. All heart. Do you know any reporters from the New Yorker magazine? Reporters? No. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? Mm, funny you mention that. Really? I once saw a strange old woman wandering the hallway back in the old building. I yelled at her to leave, and she did. I doubt that she was the one you're looking for, though. The world is full of strange old ladies, not unlike myself. Mm-hmm, ain't that the truth. Strange old ladies in this world. What can you tell me about the construction site on 53rd Street? You've been there? How's the old place looking? It's a big hole in the ground. Ha! Can only be an improvement. I used to live there. No then Seagram ground? Realty bought it and tore it down. Going to build something new and fancy, no Good doubt. Me. They kicked you out of your own home? No big loss. The place was a dump. Plus, they wanted it so badly that they paid most of us a monthly stipend just to leave. Pretty generous, actually. I can almost forgive them for nearly robbing me. So they paid you money to leave? Yup. Like I said, it was a pretty generous deal. Building was about to be condemned anyway, so everyone was grateful for the offer. Well, everyone except for Mavis Wilcox. Mavis Wilcox? Notebook updated. Who is Mavis Wilcox? A lunatic is what she was. She lived down the hall from me, so I know how crazy she was. Why was she crazy? She refused to leave is why. Seagram was offering her a fortune, but still she refused. Why did Mavis refuse to leave? She was a lunatic. I believe I already established this. A total well. shut-in. The prospect of leaving her little apartment terrified her. I'm old and feeble. If I could manage the move, she could have. 
course, it doesn't matter now. Well, it's tough to go outside. There's nothing but strangers out there. Did they ever get Mavis to leave? Oh, you could say that. Yes, you could definitely say that. She left all right. Left the entire world, in fact. You mean she died? Yes. Someone broke in and choked her to death. Right in the apartment she loved so much. I'd call it ironic if it weren't so tragic. Huh. Where we heard that before, folks. Did they ever find out who killed Mavis? No. Some street kid, most likely, thought the building was empty and went in to steal whatever was left over. Didn't count on anyone being there. Bumped into Mavis, then had to kill her. Happens all the time. Again, it, this game is set in New York, so... Yeah. How well did you know Mavis? Like I said, I live just down the hall from her, on the third floor. I didn't know her well, but she did get some mail just before they smashed the place up. I took it, just in case a relative or something came looking. But it's been six months, and nothing. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? Just that she lived on the third floor with me. There's nothing else. Can you tell me anything else about your old building? Good riddance is what I say. I lived on the third floor. Everyone on the you, street could you see. You don't like... I like my new place much better. Trust me. Hey. When it comes to New York, that's about everything one can get. That's about everything about it that has been said is true. And if it's not true, it's also true. Just ask the people there. They'll tell you. You don't know anything else about the strange old woman? No, nope, nothing else. Do you still have Mavis's things? Yes, I do. Such as they are. There wasn't much, just that envelope on the counter. Could I look at it? You knew Mavis? Sort of, yes. Well, you might as well take a look at them. Nobody else has come looking. Thanks. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. All right. But back home. There's not much in here. Just a photograph and a letter. Mr. Uh, Miss Wilcox, thank you for agreeing to speak with the media today. That's her. That's the ghost at the construction site. So our ghost's name is Mavis Wilcox. I'd bet the farm on it. Hmm. No Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> uh, thank you for agreeing to speak with me the other day. As promised, I'm returning to photograph. For you let me on the best, Jay Mitchell, the New Yorker. So we know who that is. That's her. Definitely the lady at the site. He's wearing a Columbia University sweatshirt. This kid doesn't look too happy to be with Mavis. No, there's no connection between those two. The Countess keeps turning up like a bad penny. Is she really a murderer? Yes! Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Alright, we're heading off to the New Yorker. Yes. Twice in one evening. Come on in, sit down. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? 
I've met plenty of strange old women, Miss Blackwell. Some stranger than others. Can you give me some more details? She calls herself the Countess. Mr. Mitchell? I'm Mitchell? thinking. No. I can safely say I've never set eyes on this woman. I'm sorry. Liar! But I'm not going to press the issue now. Did you know Mavis Wilcox? Miss Wilcox? Yes, I remember her. Lived up down a ways before she died. How did you know her? I wanted to write a piece about her, so I met her for a spell. Interesting woman. How did you know her? I'm looking into her death. I see. So what can you tell me about Mavis? I get the impression she didn't get out much. That's an understatement. I got in touch with her through a colleague who was covering that Keep forgetting to move the uh, cursor. Like that tick, so I made an appointment to meet with her. What was she like? A very gracious woman. Brought me in, made me a cup of tea, showed me pictures of a family. All in all, it was a pleasant way to spend an afternoon. What happened to her? Killed, so they say. Was found choked to death in her own apartment. Any thoughts on who did it? Well, there were rumors that the labor union decided to take matters into their own hands, as it were. But I doubt that. The police ruled it was some squatter or drifter or something, and left it at that. And what do you think? Me? I have no theory. Uh, well, more like, uh, get, help the, help the woman, Mavis, move on with her afterlife. Why did you want to write about her? I found her fascinating. She was asked to leave. She was begged to leave. She was even offered lots of money to leave. But she kept refusing. She was too scared. I had to know why. And what did you discover? That, Miss Blackwell, is the eternal question. I've spoken to hundreds of people over the years. Most of them were odder than Mavis. It's impossible to decipher the whys and the hows. As time went on, I've contended myself just with the what's. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? I'm afraid I've told you everything. Hmm. Are you sure you've never met a woman like that? No, I've never met a woman like that. I'd like to read your piece about Mavis. I'm afraid I no longer have it. Do you know what issue it was in? I'd like to look it up. I never published it. I was going to, but then Mavis died and it just seemed wrong somehow. I don't even have the rough copies anymore. I'm sorry. Huh. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. All right, back to 53rd and Lexington. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. Yep, just hanging out in the middle of the night on a corner. Did I leave the gas on? They have no right. No, no right. right. Where, Where else, else can, can I go? Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. Another visitor? Oh, uh, you again. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had- I'm not going- Who are you? Mm, whoops, I skipped over. It's me. Your son. Sam? Yep, that's me. Sam! It's been so long. Look at you! Yeah, look at me. Sorry, I was so rude. I almost didn't recognize you. So rude. Come on in, Sam. I'll make you dinner. Ah, uh, no, I, I can only stay for a minute. I have some questions I need to ask you. Of course, Sam. Notebook updated. So, Mom, how's it going? Oh, you know me, Sam. It's tough living here on my own, but I get by. Yeah, I can see that. Hanging out in a construction site. Listen, Mom, I need you to think very carefully. What's the last thing you remember? What do you mean? Answering the door and seeing you, of course. And before that? Nothing. You know nobody comes here. Except for the grocer, sometimes. And that... That who? Nobody. Hmm. So, Mom, how are my brothers and or sisters? That's not funny, Sam. You know you're an only child. Right, just checking. Huh. 
How's Dad, Mom? Oh, Sam. You know that your father is dead. John Durkin died years ago. Ah, right. Sorry. All right, we got some information. Do you know a guy named John Durkin? Is that a joke, Sam? You know he's been dead for ten years. Ah, uh, sorry. How can you forget he was your father? Slip my mind. Slip your mind? Just look, forget it. So tell me more about yourself, Mom. Sam, since when did you become so interested? Just trying to get to know you better. Well, isn't that sweet? But I honestly don't know what to tell you. Hmm. I'm going to go now, Mom. I'll come back to visit you soon. Sure, Sam. I'll be here. I'd like to see them try. So how's your new friend? Oh, just dandy. Totally dandy. If John Durkin was Sam's father, it's only logical that Sam's last name would be Durkin. Notebook updated. Right. Heading back. Home sweet home. There's no entry for that. That's right, he's dead. Hmm, there's no listing. I thought for sure that would work. Columbia University. Here's the number. Direct your call. How about Sam Durkin? Is there a Sam Durkin listed? Sam Durkin, yes. Hold, please. It's about time. Durkin. Is this Sam? Yeah. Who's this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping to ask you a few questions about your mother. Oh. Questions, huh? Totally questions. Yeah. All right. I'll bite. How do you know my mom? I was her neighbor. You used to live in that dump? Yeah. And you knew Mavis? Very well. You actually talked to her? Yeah, all the time. Where, in the hallway? Why all the questions? Because I don't believe you. Whether you believe me or not, it can't hurt to talk to me. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you knew her, you'd know what apartment number she was in. I would? Sure you would. She never left the damn place. So what was it? All right, so maybe you did know her. Thank you. So what do you want to know about her? What do you know about her death? It was suicide. Suicide? She killed herself? Not literally, but it was like she chose to die. She had every opportunity to leave. They were going to pay her and find her a new place and everything. I tried to get her out, but that's my mom. She couldn't be dragged out of that dump by anybody or anything. Do you know who killed her? She was killed by some junkie, wasn't she? Hmm. So they say. You think different? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, good luck to you. How close were you with your mother? Close. Think of the farthest place you can and add another 10,000 miles. That's how close we were. Pretty close. She wasn't a mother, just crazy on wheels. Did Mavis ever leave her apartment? Never. Not once in the last 15 years. You don't seem upset by her death. Upset? Sure, she was my mom. But am I going to lose sleep? No. She drove my pop out of the house and into an early grave. I once thought I'd follow in his footsteps, but not anymore. The woman didn't go anywhere. Never did anything. She was killing me just by existing. Now I feel like I can breathe again. That's the truth. What was it like living with her? You kidding? I live with my pop. After three years of marriage, he had enough. Glad he had the sense to take me with him. And after hmm. your father died? I got by. You never visited your mother? Yeah, I visited her on Mother's Day, if that's what you want to know. 
Even got her a present once. Really? Yeah, for all the good it did. All right, we got more information. What did you give your mom for Mother's Day? I don't think that's any of your business, lady. It's been years. Just dust in the ground now. Bye, Sam. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Alrighty, so... Whoa. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Moving right along... To the New Yorker! Yes. Three times in one night! I'm becoming downright popular. Come in, have a seat. Dude, it's the same two people. Well, one person and a half is coming to visit you. It's actually a uh, publication. Do you know anything about John Durkin, Mavis's ex-husband? Oh yeah, she did talk about him. Broke her heart, she said. I know they divorced very early in the marriage and he died several years later. But I'm afraid I know nothing else. Do you know anything about Sam, Mavis's son? I'm afraid not. Mavis discussed her son and seemed proud of him, but I don't think they see each other. I've never met the boy myself. Hmm. Did Mavis ever mention a gift or present from her son? Now that you mention it, yes. She showed me a leather-bound edition of Alice in Wonderland and said it was from her son. Alice in Wonderland? Yes, by Lewis Carroll. Yeah, I've heard of it. What was that present Mavis got from her son? It was a leather... Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. All right. I think we got the trigger. If memory serves me right. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. Hey, Final Nightmare. How was the rest of your stream? Did I leave the gas on? Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. My. I'm popular today. Oh, hello, Sam. Hi. Mom. There might be, I'm not totally sure, but there are on Steam, uh, Troll Hunter. Very good. Hey, Mom. Do you have that present I gave you? Which, Which present, present was that? that? The book, Alice in Wonderland. Of course I still have it. It was the only Mother's Day gift you ever bought me, Sam. Can I see it? Whatever for. Come on, Ma, I just want to see it. Sure, Sam. It's right on the table. Great. Uh, why don't you bring it out here? You mean, pick it up? Yeah, pick it, pick it up, up and, and bring, bring it, it over. over. Pick it up. Sure, I can pick it up. Oh! Oh no! What? The book! It's gone! Gone, huh? Imagine that. Somebody stole it! Sam, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's okay, Mom. Okay? Okay? I lost your gift! You can't pick up the book because it's not there. Sam? The book's not there, and neither is the table, right? What? Think! The book's gone, the table's gone, the whole room is gone. Everything's Sam, gone! Sam, you're awful! I'm upset and I'm sorry. Don't make it worse, please! You need to find that book, Mom. I don't know if I can love a mother who loses my gifts. You don't mean that. I mean it, Mom. You need to tell me where the book is. But... I don't know where to look. Maybe it's out here, Mom. In the hallway? Sure, in the hallway. Yeah, I'm sure it's out here. Come on out and help me look. Oh, okay, Sam. But only for you. I, I, I still, I still don't, don't see, see it anywhere. anywhere. Let's try further down, Mom. I'm, I'm, I'm outside. Yeah, I knew you could do it, Mom. Mom? Sam? Sam, Sam where, where are, are we? we? 
I'm scared. I'm right here. Mom, I need you to do something. What? Turn around. I can't. Sure you can. Just turn, turn around, around and look behind you. Oh. Where's, Where's the, building? the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You. You made me leave, and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. You are not my son. My son hates me. All I had left was my home, and then... Slowly realizing. Then I... Oh, God. Are you happy now? You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I... I don't want to feel like this anymore. You get used to being dead? so dark and cold. Can I go home now? Sure. Sure, I can take you home. Just hold on to this. Over to you, kid. Right. Oh my god. Nervous? It's so bright and big. It just goes on forever. I just want to go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life, over. I remember that too. Dying, I mean. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. Uh, well, hmm. what now? The light, Mavis. Just head towards it. Go towards the light. And then? I don't know. I'm scared, but... It feels right somehow. Oh, John. Sam. I'm so sorry. For everything. I wish I could feel sorry for you. But I don't feel much of anything anymore. Best of luck, wherever you are. Yep. Yeah, but... Alright. You alright? Yeah, fine. I'm exhausted. Call it a night? Sounds good to me. You. You! Like clockwork. You saved her! Yeah, sure we did. No thanks to you. We've got some questions for you, lady. Why did you kill Isaac and Mavis? I didn't kill them! I'm like you! You're nothing like us. We don't kill. I help spirits into the next world! Like you! You mean... You're a medium? Yes! But you can't be. I am like you! Wait, no. This doesn't make any sense. Why are you killing people? I save people! I don't hurt them! Get back here! Stupid old hag! Let's get after her. Was the first game also about- Yes, it is. God damn it. Your nose okay? That lamppost should not have been there. Uh, yeah, all five of them are. But it's a gradual mystery and everything. That builds up over the course of... That's a great conclusion. Feeling better? I'm so confused, Joey. I feel like the answer is on the tip of my tongue. I just can't figure it out. Well, let's chat for a while. Brainstorm a bit. Maybe we'll come up with something. Why would a medium kill? Maybe she doesn't think of it as killing. She did say she helped people, saved them. By killing them? Maybe she felt they were better off dead? I don't think so. Mavis and Isaac were sad mixed up people, but they didn't deserve to die. Maybe she thinks otherwise. Troll Hunter, that's just... I'm just gonna come and say that's just as that's just dumb, man. I'm just gonna straight up say that. She's a medium like me. It makes no sense. It does make sense, actually. 
She's not an animal or another ghost. I mean, the only way she <laughs> could see me is if she was a medium like you. If she's a medium, where is her spirit guide? You know, I wondered that myself. I'm your connection to the spirit world. The Countess, or whoever she is, doesn't have that. Or at least none that we can see. Is it possible to be a medium without a guide? I don't think so, sweetheart. That's one thing I'm sure of. Medium and guide, that's how it works. Is she my future? What do you mean? That woman, the Countess, or whatever she's called. Is that what happens to mediums when they get old? I... I don't know, darling. I really don't. But I won't let that happen to you. You have my word on that. Yeah, message deleted. Hey, look. People are entitled to do what they want. If they want to smoke, fine. No hair off my head. Got a glorious hair. What could have happened to her spirit guide? I don't know. I thought you couldn't leave my side. I know. Either her spirit guide managed to escape, or... Or what? Or it was killed. Is that possible? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. So what could her connection be? Dunno. Something has to connect her to the spirit world. It's not another ghost or we would see it. So it must be something else. Something that has a connection to everything we've seen. Or someone. Yeah, that's it. The Countess connects these two cases. There has to be something or someone else that has the same connection. The New Yorker! Joseph Mitchell? Bingo! The reporter? How could he have this kind of power? I don't know how he got the power, but it all fits. He wrote about both Mavis and Isaac, and the Countess killed both of them. He seems like the best candidate. But it doesn't make any sense. Think about it. You're a medium. What is it that mediums do? We help spirits into the next world. Exactly. A medium needs a guide. Hers is gone. Somehow Mitchell fills in the gap. Our Countess is being told through Mitchell's writing to help certain spirits into the next world. It's not her fault they're still alive. <laughs> yes, it is. I think you get the picture. Oh, God. That's sick. It makes sense, though. How is this possible? There's only one way to find out. It's time we paid our friend Mitchell one more visit. Whoops. Hmm. I made those the corpse is laying uh, him, so it is what it is. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. To the New Yorker. Yes. Miss Blackwell. Hello again, Mr. Mitchell. I was just about to head home. Oh, I'll just be a second. Well, if you insist, do have a seat. Thanks, but I'd rather stand. Go on, let him have it. Mind if I smoke? Well, actually. Thanks. <laughs> Miss Blackwell, my patience is wearing thin. My family is waiting for me. Tell me what you want. You finished your writing for the day, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, yes I have. And now I'm going home. He's full of hot air. The page is blank. You haven't written anything today, have you? Why do you say that? The paper is blank. Mm -hmm. What? How do you know that? I have exceptional eyesight. There's dust. Don't forget the dust. And there's dust on the typewriter. Well, can't contradict you there. So? So, I don't think that's any of your business, Miss Blackwell. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Mitchell, two people are dead. So I gathered. You wrote about both of them. Yes, I did. You don't find anything suspicious about that. I've written about hundreds of people over 30 years. The fact that two of them happen to be dead does not surprise me. It's just a coincidence. Sure Anything it is. Anything about my life, Mr. Mitchell? If something looks like a coincidence, it normally isn't. Well, I hate to disappoint you. Ooh, look at 
Look at the sweat on this guy's brow. We yeah, can't see it. Lying, no I'm resolution. Dying, so to speak. Joey, you're already dead. You aren't a very good liar. And you are poking your nose into things you don't understand. You'd be surprised at what I understand, Mr. Mitchell. Try me. Who are you, anyway? You come in, out of the blue, and bring up all this. All of what? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I write about people and they die. Can you understand that, can you? My whole life I've been driven to write about people. Now I kill them instead. Why is this happening? I think it's a penance of some kind. I've shared the intimate details of people's lives with the world. Perhaps I revealed one secret too many. I don't think about it anymore. I just come to work like nothing's wrong. Everyone's been very polite so far, but I'm sure the ball will drop someday. You've done nothing wrong. There's a woman called the Countess. Mm -hmm. She kills whoever you write about. A Countess? Killing people? That I write about. That's yep. a thrilling tall story. And that's a lot to take in. Why would she do something like that? How did this happen? Probably because of your connection to humanity. I don't know. You said probably. So you're not sure? Not as such, no. Well then. I appreciate you trying, but I prefer if you left well enough alone. I can't leave it alone, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, rest assured you can. You seem like a capable young lady, and I'm sure you think you know what's what, but I don't want any do what's what. conscience. You're not a murderer, Mr. Mitchell. No, I'm not. Five years back, I tried to write about a man. An old man in a bar. He was killed the next day, choked to death. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Then I wrote about another man, Mr. Isaac Brown. You know him. He died the same way. Still figured it was just a coincidence. But mm -hmm. then it happened with Mavis Wilcox, for the third time in a row. No, I didn't kill them, not on purpose. But if I wrote a fourth time, that would be murder, plain and simple. I'm trying to help you. And I never asked for it. People die when I write, so I don't write. The problem solved. Don't you want to write again? Oh yes, but people are safe as long as I don't write about anything real. I've always wanted to try handed fiction. Had a story in my head for years. I'll probably give it a whirl, see how it goes. Hmm. But no more deaths. Not on my watch. Don't you want to help? There's a killer out there. Who only kills people I write about. So I stop writing about people. Problem solved. Man, I'm trying every line of dialogue here. If you won't help me, I'll have to go to the police. Oh. And tell them what? All those deaths? All killed the same way? So soon after you met them? I'm sure they'd be interested in that information. Is that right? Well, I'd be careful if I were you. Careful? I'm not without defenses, if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Is that a threat? Are you threatening to write about me? I didn't say anything. <laughs> you know what? Go right ahead. What do you mean? You want to write so bad? Write about me. Dust off that typewriter and get to work. Knock yourself out. Listen, I spoke out of turn. I didn't honestly mean... Hell with that. Just do it. Hey, this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. Do, do we now? Like hell you can't. You've been writing for how long? 30 years? More? I know you can do it. I want to meet this thing head on. It's the only way. Do it. You don't know what you're asking. What's the worst that could happen? You could die. Oh. Is that all? But... Quiet. Right. I was born in Troy, upstate New York. My mother's name was Patricia. My father... You getting this stuff down? Well, I hope you're happy. I'm never happy. Clearly. All right. Hey. We're supposed to be a team. You can't make this kind of decision without asking me first. Button it, Joey. If this bra's a medium like me, then I have some questions for her. If I'm gonna end up like that, I wanna know. 
And if she kills you for your trouble? Well, then I won't have to worry. And what happens to me, huh? You die, what the heck happens to me? You'll move on to whoever's next. That's how it works, doesn't it? It's not about that. Maybe you'll end up with my baby brother. I'm sure you guys will get along great. Yeah, great. When do you think she'll get here? I don't know. I feel her coming, though. She knows who I am. How can you feel that? I just do. She was right. She's like me. Maybe mediums call out to each other. Well, as a large, I wouldn't know anything about a medium. So, any thought on how to handle her? Nope, not a one. I just want to talk to her. Well, she can see and hear me, so I can help. You're not alone. Yeah. You understand? You're not alone. I'm tired, Joey. I'm so tired. All right. I'll just leave you to it. Yeah. Well, they, as the games went along, they got better graphically. Watching you. So, what's your story? I want to help you. Help me, huh? You're in pain? Lost? I can help. Who are you? I am the Countess. Do you have a guide? The spirit guide? I still feel her. She is gone, but not completely gone. What do you mean? Kid, her mind is snapped. She's not gonna make any sense. Yes. She snapped my mind. She went away and my world expanded. I see everything. Everything. It hurts. You're bonded with Joseph Mitchell. Is that his name? The guide who is not a guide? Yes. The non-guide. He speaks to the world. He spoke to me. Better technology, he tells that's me why. What to do. Oh, he is so awful that's... silent. It's been years since I heard. That's a trolly voice, statement, Troll Hunter. I get that troll is in your name, but come on, dude. He told me to help you. Look at Mario he 1 to Mario 3. Graphics why change. Else would I, be here? I I'm here to help you. You're here to kill me. No! I don't Ugh. kill! I will set you Elder free! Elder Scrolls. Hey, watch it, lady. Four to five. Those graphics are not the same. Well, games are made on a budget. Point and click games are pretty much on the low end of the scale. Again, when people first games come out, you build on what was there. The graphic improvement and things of that nature. I mean, it's n that's not that much of a stretch. Look at Mass Effect 2 and 3. Those games have a two-year gap between them. And, and Mass Effect 3 looks totally different in terms of its graphics and in, in its presentation from Mass Effect 2. Or look at a sports game franchise. I'm just thinking you're just trying to derail me, man. I, I honestly think that here. Because... Uh, wrong, because I have played all five of the of the Blackwell games before. And streamed them all before, too. Point and click graphic games, the graphic adventures like this don't can look any way in style. You look at the the Lucas Arts games and everything of nature. You look at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and how that look, and look at how Fate of Atlantis look, and then look at something like um, the Dig and all or the Sierra games and, and everything that they've done. Games constantly change in their presentation, particularly if they're in a series. And 
and also it depends on how much investment they're putting into into the development of a game. Oh, you never heard of indie developers then? Dude, no, 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 dude, you're, you're straight up trolling with that statement, dude. Indie developers are on a budget. You, you're saying that no no game developers are... You, you're a PC gamer. You look on Steam. How many indie developers there are? You take a good hard look. I'm, fuck, I'm sorry, I'm snapping, but I'm pissed right the hell off right now. Because that's an ignorant statement to make. That is a... It, that's an... That's an incredibly ignorant statement to make. No one has such a low budget to make a game like this in 2008. Wrong. You are so damn wrong, it's not even funny. Not only is that disrespectful to just about every indie developer that's out there, because you look at games that come out now. There are indie games that come out here in 2020 that had that are made on a budget and they can only do so much. So they either are going for, they are limited by what they can do in terms of presentation. Troll Hunter, you're digging yourself a bigger hole with me than... <laughs> you're digging yourself a hole. You're digging yourself a hole. You're living up to the to the third part of your thing name there here with those statements. Like, like that dude. It's like BS You again, you go on you go on Steam, you can find games that come out now that have this exact same style and presentation. Heck you got RPGs that come out now that look like they were made back in the 1980s. And I get it, and trust me, Trollhunter, I get it. You like to stir the pot. But here, I'm going to say this right now. Drop it. Because... A lot of what you said, so you may not intend it, but that's how it's coming across. To, that's how it's coming across to me. Disrespect for the developers and the folks that put the game in and everything like that. No, drop it. This is like you look at, and I'm just looking at my own collection now, because because now I am I am pissed right the hell off. Look at Telltale Games. You look at a lot of the stuff that they did early. Yeah, they had like kind of like three D graphics and everything else. That's how their games develop. But you look at a lot of their early stuff. It was modeled after the point and click graphic adventure. No, that's not what you meant at all. If, if, that's not what you meant at all because that's not what you said. Like a lot of first-person shooters, there's still first-person shooters that come out today based on the model of Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. Heck, Double Dragon 4 was intentionally made to resemble the NES versions of Dragon Double Dragons 1, 2, and 3. There are still retro plat games made in the retro platformer style, primarily because developers may not have the funds to do anything bigger or better with that. Uh, you said it in a way that was disrespectful of them. Like your exact your exact words. In two thousand eight, no one has such a low budget to make a game that looks like that. Those are your exact words. Those are your exact words. No one had. 
You know why I do you know why I let the credits roll at the end of a, a game when I finish a game? It's primarily because it shows respect to those people who put the time in. And you start realizing how small a development team is in some cases. Where games get developed by maybe a handful of people, or in some cases just one person. Bullshit. Trust me. I don't get I don't like getting angry. I don't like getting annoyed. I don't like getting fucking trolled. But I say this right now, you just Who was your spirit guide? She had a name. I no longer know. I wish I knew. I cannot think. Not without her. Why did she leave? Why? Where is your spirit guide now? I don't know. Her voice is gone. I'm lost. I found that other voice. But he is so quiet. You mean Mitchell? The true guide. She is gone. Gone. How did she go away? I don't know. She found a way. Why did she do that? Were you like me before your spirit guide went away? Like you? You know, sane. Joey. I was happy. I was smaller. Saw the world in muted colors. And there was music. Sweet music. We helped people. It felt good. Now she is gone. Now I help people, but it feels bad. Will I become like you? Please tell me. That's all I want to know. You? You are loved. Loved? Loved by who? You are in pain, my child. Let me help you. Troll Hunter, drop it. That's the third time I said it. I'd like to help you instead. Help me? I need no help. You need to be free. Hey. Hey! Let her go, you old witch! Damn it! I can't do anything! Fight her! Lauren, fight back! Fight back, damn you! <laughs> Alright! That's what happens when you mess with us. Stay away from her! No, she needs my help! Hey, you want to help someone? Why don't you help me? You want to free a spirit? Well, I'm the real McCoy. You? Yeah, that's right. Come and save me. I'm right here. I... Wait. I'm supposed to help her. Oh! My head! I'm waiting. I'll save you. I'm in pain. What are you going to do about it? I can help you. You're past your prime. I don't think you can handle it. Phew. Come on, then. Make with the saving. You need me? Why do you move so far? You don't need help. Her. She needs my help. Hey. I need help. Help? Come on, take me to the place with the bright light. I can help you. You're so good at helping, let's see you help me. I will set you free. Oh, woe is me, I'm in so much torment. Save me, damn you! Are you hurting? 
are you waiting for? Come on! Oh, shh! I will help you. Come on, you old bat! Save me! Your hurt will end soon. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? I... I want to help you. Why won't you let me help you? Uh, J Joey? I'm sorry. I can't look, is she? Yeah. He There's dead. No... no ghost. She's gone. Gone. I killed her. It was either her or you, darling. You made the right choice. Did I? What if, what if that's me one day, huh? What if I'm old and confused and alone? You won't be alone. I'll make sure of that. You say that now. But look at her. Her guide was gone. I can't speak for the future, kid. Maybe someday we'll meet someone like her, and then maybe we'll find out more. But right here, right now, I'm here, and I'm staying put. That's something, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's something. This is a bad idea. You don't need to do this. Hello? Hi, Jack? Lauren, sis, is that you? Yeah, Jack, it's me. Where have you been? It's not important. I miss you. Tell me about your life, Jack. How's Maria? When's the wedding? This is a really bad idea. And that wraps up the game, folks. Sorry for the delay in the ending. We got distracted. Again, the Blackwell Legacy uh, Saga, as I like to call it, is a great collection of games. And each game builds up nicely. And this is actually a prequel to the first game. Games 3, 4, and 5 are essentially uh, follow the events of the first game. Now here's the funny thing. Joseph Mitchell was an actual reporter for the New Yorker. You can actually uh But when day And more likely we'll do the third game next week. But the bottom says a special thanks to Coffee. Special activation code Real Ugly. More than likely, smoke during the game Lauren smoked twenty six cigarettes and Joey was hit one time. Yeah. I was trying to go for there was a there was an achievement 
for finishing the game with Lauren only fo- smoking on 20 cigarettes. When the stars so it's kind of like a speed run. I was trying to go for it, but it went through it like in two hours. Well, le- technically less than two hours, but that's how it goes. We did get uh, a couple of achievements tonight, so not a total loss. Music tracks. When a love that her lover star. Okay, so there you go. So you, um, let's talk about Lauren first, because that was, because you sent a whole chunk of sprite designs for her originally. Sketches, yeah, there's kind of an evolution there. Yeah, like you originally gave her earrings, you had different colors. Yeah, and... well, I gave her big hoopy earrings, but they ended up making her look a bit too young for how she should have been. As she yeah, is, and... she kind of looks a bit young, but that's okay. You know, people would rather well, play as She's only like 30. She's not that old. <laughs> You're 30, aren't you? <laughs> I am 30. <laughs> 31, thank you. Oh, Lauren Behind the scenes, commentary. Colored skirts that we tried to decide on. Plus, she used to have shoulders like a football player, but anyway, that was more <laughs> 80s, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we can throw that one in there for people to look yeah, at. She's she's kind of intimidating, but you know. <laughs> Thomas Rain's first composition of the John Belial Records music. A very catchy tune, but we decided that it was too upbeat for the game's tone. Think the ghostly synth at the end. This originally played during the section when Joey confronts the Countess. Thomas decided to recompose it because he felt that Joey and the Countess should be dancing to this music instead of fighting to it. Concept art. Yeah, Convergence is the next game, if memory serves me right. More concept sketches. A Labyrinth of Lawrence. More concept sketches. At least you got a good idea what the character looks like. middle one kind of looks like Michael Jackson. Yeah, it kind of does. First concept sketch for the C Sharps photograph by Julie Gilberg, later colored by Elon Jammer. The first sketch was uh, redone because I felt Cyrus' uh, dress was too teeny uh, boppery. Yeah, because she's wearing a sweater and a skirt, not a dress. Concept sketch of Lauren on the bridge. It's professionalism, folks, professionalism. Lauren and the headless Joey. An early concept sketch of Cecil Sharp. It is great when you see like the uh, the bass lines. Lauren and Joey. Lauren definitely the full on sass. If this game was made, if they put money into the quote unquote budget for the presentation of the game, at least you got a good idea what these characters 
Look like beyond sprite form. The count is old and haggardy. Isaac Brown, sax player. The count is strangler Lauren in the early designs. Lauren wore pants. No concept sketch of Lauren, who is looking very sick and oddly enough pregnant. Because it's how she's standing. And high waist high waistline on that skirt or dress. Yeah. Lauren looking very 70s. And it looks like they brought the waistline down a bit there. Some more sketches. They got bell bottom pants. Placeholder art. This is what the construction site looked like before actual background was complete. First sketch of Johnny Iris. Never did include the bartender was never included, but everything else pretty much was there, but just the angle changed. Jambalaya Records concept, pr pretty much as is. And Lauren looks like had more of like hair tied back and a bigger bushy ponytail if I'm looking at this right. Mine over here. I would assume that's kind of like more of the hair. Maybe since Sam Sketch, it was, yeah, this was redone. Not much changed on that. Original sprite designs for Lauren. We like the earrings, but decided to make it a little too gypsy. Or they made it look too young. And it was that little commentary track pulling out like the shoulder pads. Oh. Of her shirt, okay. Madeline, yeah, and this is for yeah. Convergence is the next game. If memory serves me right. Yeah, it is the th it. Convergence is the next game. B. And you actually can see the next step in the evolution there. Where this is Rosangela, who is Lauren's niece, and but the big thing here is Joey in terms of his bright and how it looks. And we got some bloopers here. Kid, touch me. Touch me in exactly the right place. <laughs> you make me feel like a natural poltergeist. <laughs> well, I wonder... Well, that's definitely an outtake. Honey, it means a pee-pee in the pool pool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a little Jar Jar Banks sauce right there. You know what? I'm gonna let's do this whole thing. Yeah, let's do both games over and you do it all like Jar Jar. How about that? I would actually, I think that doing Jar Jar, Jar Jar Malone. Because I remember like, I think there was one or two reviews where they were like, you know, Joey's a little flat, and I think what could really solve that is putting in a little Jar Jar sauce, yeah. just spreading that on. Read this next line like Jar Jar. Uh, which one? Okay. Nope, Misa can't leave the kid's side. I don't leave here till she dies. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's never gonna happen. That's I'll read it like idiot on me, and that'll work beautifully. <laughs> the last king of Blackwell. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Business, because that's what we do. Okay. So there you go. Some stuff behind the scenes, and it's like the good thing about wrapping up a game is you get to take a look. Uh, very stuff there. 
That actually closes the game out there. Let's pop over here. As we will update the whole... Actually, we'll be updating the... Oh, great. Gotta love it when the Twitch desktop app stops working. So we... Alrighty, so we're going to do it do it all through um uh, through the web browser as opposed to my preference of editing these things in the desktop app. But still I'm not sure exactly what we we're gonna do next, but we're not we're not ending this stream at quarter after nine Eastern Standard Time. Because as the title of the stream says, Black Round Unb Unbound and then other things. So let's see. Finish games. March, excuse me, March. April 04, Blackwell Unbound. The tour, this year's gaming tour. So this. Stream elements, dashboard. So There's like 20 games finished this year. Great part is, is that you end, at least in my case, is I tend to pick games that I know I can finish maybe in one night or so. Some stuff take four to five hours, some stuff take multiple nights, but... Whoops. Edit. 20 games finished in 2020. That counts for something, right? It's the April 3rd, 2020. All right, so what the heck am I going to do 